All right, time to take the fox squirrel out and get him neutralized and start getting things ready to get mounted. All right, guys, I got him all neutralized, washed up, cleaned up. If you're wanting to know how to do that, go check out the otter soft tanning process. And uh, I'll show you how I tan and neutralize the process of that. Okay, so you can see he's pretty white. You got a little bit left here, the membrane. It's got a little bit of the tanning stain on it, which it's fine. It's not going to hurt nothing. And you can actually take and peel it with your hand. As you can see, I've already peeled off some of it, cleaning it up. Ah. All right, well, let's get on to the next part. So what I need to do is get him onto this form. Now, what I'm going to do is cut the legs off. And I'm going to show you how I do that so that you get them back correctly. All right, so what I did is I came and I cut at an angle here to the arm. Then I came from this direction and cut it another angle, kind of like a V. And then I stopped short from them meeting and I broke it. The reason for that, and some of you already got it figured out, is so, bam, it'll fit right back into place. If those broken sections there don't line up, then it's just not gonna fit until everything lines right back up. So when you slide it up into the skin and you start assembling it together, everything will fall right back into place. If you cut it straight and even, then that thing's just gonna slip and slide back and forth on you. That's the reason why you cut it in an angle and break it. Okay, now I've slid it up in here to test fit it and actually it fit just about perfect. Not loose, not tight. Now something that I had to take and learn that I was guilty of and maybe still am is make sure that hair pattern lines up like it's supposed to. Now, I'm just test fitting it. I've got it on there. I'm gonna slide it back off. I'm gonna do all four legs the same way. And if they all fit nicely, then I'm gonna take it and pack down in there with a little bit of clay at the wrist. And I'm also gonna take, and I'll show you right now, So I'm going to cut that last little round piece off. Cut me a little dimple in there. That way my clay at the junction will bond in here a little better and I can shape it a little better. All right, now I'm going to do all four legs the same way. Make sure it all fits and then I'll start test fitting the body and putting everything together. Make sure everything lines up. All right, change of plans. So I actually got it slid without cutting the back legs or this front leg. And as you can see, I can close that gap up. I'm not worried about that. It'll come together. So instead of cutting off the three legs, because I can't get the head to slide over, which, you know, is typical, but that's fine because what I'm going to do now is make one of those V cuts and break and cut the head off. All right, I'd rather cut the head than to do all the legs. That's less repair. Okay, same thing. I just cut a V. Ooh, and there we go. Cut my V. Remove the head. Now I'm gonna slip the head inside there. Slip it back over the front leg, put this leg back in test fit it all if it's good to go then i'll start my clay work and we're going to go from there okay now i've got everything test fitted on here everything's lining up like it's supposed to that leg went back into position the head's back into position as you can see the skin come together i can pull that together at the bottom that's not a problem at all. I just got it kind of, like I said, test fitted on here. And uh, let me give you all some advice. When you're doing squirrels, 
the less you pull on them, the better off you're going to be. Something about the hairs come out of them really easy, even after being tanned. All right, well, I think I'm going to have to make a little altering to the head to get the eyes and everything to line up and close up like it's supposed to be. But I don't think I'm going to have to do much. Get that lip on out of there and let's see. I think I got enough. Yeah, I can start. And I got the other skin. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I got enough skin there. I can finish digging that inner skin out. Oh, yeah. Everything will come together. All right. Well, I'll be right back. Okay. I cut off the tip of the nose. Cut a little dimple into it. Packed it. And just kind of reshaped it that way when the nose slides on there i can work with it a little bit and get it how i want the forms come rough sometimes okay then i took the ear same thing cut out a little dimple then i packed it with clay like this right here i just push the clay in there I got a little bit much extra there, but that's fine. And then I'll take it and just kind of feather it out. Because then whenever I take and put the clay for the ear butts, even if the ear is one direction or the other, that clay will line up and I'll be able to smash it and see get it to stick and stay and do what I need to do with it okay now I'm gonna take I cut out the mouth on small game you do them a little different than deer and then I'm gonna take and I'll pack it and then after I get it all packed then at the center point I'll cut me a crease in there to tuck my skin in and then I'll be able to push it and pack it and get it to hold in the eyes, I'm gonna put a little bit in for the eyes and then insert the eyes and put a little bit of clay around the eye where it meets the foam here so it'll hold in place. I'll show you in just a second. Okay, and I say I got the mouth and that's all right. It don't have to be perfect because it's gonna get a little distorted as you're putting the skin on anyway. I got this other eye done and I'm gonna show you. So I took and I cut it out a little bit deeper and I'm just gonna take and put a little bit of clay back down in there. Push that clay in there. And I'm gonna take the eye and I'm gonna push the eye until it hits and then stop. You want that eye to stick out. Cause if you sink it too much once you get that skin on there, it's hard to get that eye to pop back out some. But if the eye is sticking out too much with the skin on, you can still push and force it down in there a little bit. Now let's take this clay and let's go around it. And just pack a little bit in around that gap. Pushing it down off the glass. Smooth it out. Okay. And that'll work until we get it on there. Okay. Now we need to take and refill the backside of the hand where we remove that bone and tissue and meat because the form is going to stop right about here at the wrist. So we're going to take it. Take the skin. I'm going to roll it a little bit take that clay slip me a little ball of clay in there just push it on up and actually that clay stops right there where I need it to 
Looks like it's got it filled pretty good. Well, I'm going to put just a little bit more. Because you can always, like the eye being pushed in further, I can always push a little clay and push it up and smooth it out of the way. If you don't have enough, you can just have to take it back out and redo it all again. All right, I'm going to do that all the way around. See, this is what you're trying to do. You're trying to rebuild that foot. Putting back what was removed, because we removed it right here. At the base of the fingers, if you want to call them that. So we need to rebuild that back up to where when the form goes in to where the junction to it like that that's why I always put just a little bit more right there like I said then you can squeeze it and work it around it all right now when it comes to the ear you're gonna want to take a piece of clay and replicate the same size as your ear with a little bit of thickness up here and a little bulkier for the earbud at the bottom. And you're gonna slide it on in there. And yes, you've got to turn the ears. It's a pain in the butt. Probably gonna make a hole or two, but it's gotta be done. And you get it up in there. Boom. And then once I get it on there, then I'll get to mashing it around and shaping it. Right now, if I try to do all that, it's going to get bumped around and distorted. So I at least got it in there at the moment. Okay, for the tail, you're going to need to make some little skinny pieces to slide down in there. A gray squirrel. Yeah, you can kind of get away with it. But these guys, as you can see, had a little meat on the base of the tail there, so you need to take and rebuild it back up a little ways down. And then, once you start to get further up, then you'll take and insert a little bigger piece, filling it in. You can just mash it down in there. Then you'll take your metal rod and you'll insert it and slide it all the way down the tail. And there. And actually, you want to push, you don't want to stretch it all the way out. You'll want to push it back a little bit, pushing those hairs closer, and that'll help to fluff it up and look more natural, too. All right, continue on. All right, so I took, and actually it has a little indention there, so I packed it with clay. And then I took the metal rod, and to get it out your way from now, I just took it and slid it all the way down, which you have your hole at the end from where you popped it through for your tanning. And then just slide it down. And then once I get everything fitted onto the form, then I'll push it back, inserting it into the body. Also, I'm gonna take, and I fill the tail in, but I'm gonna put me a nice ball of clay right there at the base of it for the junction of where it's gonna meet. All right. Okay, I've inserted the head and the arm that I cut off. Now I'm gonna come and slip these back legs in, slip the front leg in, get everything lined up and then start connecting those back together and I'm going to show you how to do that.